We're going to do something a little different today. I am going to go through all the major scales. Uh, you're going to see it on the piano, but you're going to see it in a way that I am going to guess has never entirely been shown to you. And it is a way that is going to cut the amount of work, I would say in half, but the fact is it's actually going to cut it more like down to almost a quarter of the amount of work and you're still gonna learn all the major scales. Now, I am not somebody who likes to tell people, oh, you're gonna learn everything in music theory in, in the next six and a half seconds. I don't believe in that. If you're gonna do it right, it takes time. There's a lot of information, and if you shortchange yourself on the time, you're simply not learning everything that can be done. So I'm not crazy about ever trying to tell people it's going to take no time, and you can learn to sight read at the piano in a week. If you learn to sight read in a week, it means you've learned to play two notes in a week. You're not going to be actually sight reading like a pianist who considers themselves to be a good sight reader. So I just want to get that out of the way. I'm not that kind of a person. I don't believe in teaching and cutting out lots and lots of things and then telling people, hey, guess what? You did everything great when the reality is it's just because they didn't do much stuff. So that's not what I'm about. You're going to do it the real way, but it's so much less time than you ever thought is possible. So just talking about the scales, all 12 major scales, as most people know, each one is unique. Not, there is no scale that is exactly the same, the entire pattern, as one of the other major scales. So when you're doing the scales, you have to learn 12. When you're doing tetrachords, tetrachord is half of the major scale. You also need to sort of learn 12. So let's start by saying, okay, if your scale is eight notes, your tetrachord is four notes, so you're learning half of the scales. But it's less than that because, remember what I said about major scales, how all of the pattern is unique to each scale. But with tetrachords, almost half of them are identical to another group of tetrachords. In fact, to be exactly precise, five of the tetrachords are the exact same pattern as five of the other tetrachords. So those five can be canceled out. So out of 12 tetrachords, you really need to just learn seven. So that's how it's almost down to a quarter of the work of learning the major scales, but you will still learn your major scales. So. First thing we want to remind ourselves of is what is a tetrachord. Everybody's scared of this word. It sounds like some big, oh God, tetrachord, ah. So that's what everybody says. They see the word tetrachord. They think it's this big, scary word. It's very, very simple. So let's get that out of the way. Make sure that we're comfortable with the word because we're going to be doing a lot of them. It's not a big deal. Tetra means four. So that's the first thing we need to know. Tetrachord is four, but not four chords. The part that says chord, C-O-R-D, that is not a chord as in one of these. That's a chord as in one of these. In other words, chord as in a string. And that string, when you pluck it, it makes a sound. So when we say tetrachord, we're saying four strings. Each separate string, you pluck it, you get another sound. It's a fancy way of saying four notes. That's the first part. The next part is when we're talking about a tetrachord, we're talking about a specific collection of four notes. We're talking about four notes that move by whole step, another whole step, and a half step. That is our tetrachord. And why we, okay, I'm not even going to tell you why we like them so much, but that's the first thing you need to know, is a tetrachord goes up whole step, whole step, half step. Now I'm going to turn the camera down to the piano because you don't need to see my face for this, but you do need to see the piano. Okay, so let's look at the tetrachord on C. This one's nice and easy. It goes up. Remember, that's not a whole step. Everybody does this. They go, okay, whole step, whole step. No, that's not a whole step. That's just a note. Okay, so remember if you were standing in place and I say walk one step, you're not going to stand here and go, okay, I've just gone a step. No, you have to actually go to the next place, right? So this is just a place, go up a step, it's that. It's the same thing. This is just a note. Now go up, whole step, whole step, half step. That is our tetrachord. Whole step, whole step, half step, going up. Again, 
Whole step, whole step, half step. I think I need to turn up my keyboard a little bit. I'll do it again. C, whole step, whole step, half step. All right, let's go to the D flat. Whole step, whole step, half step. Let's do it again. Gonna go on D, up a whole step, whole step, half step. Again, whole step, whole step, half step. E flat, whole step. It's bigger than you might think. Hang on, my computer keeps going black on me. Okay, up a whole step. It seems big, but we just passed that half step to get to the whole step, so it's still a whole step. Whole step, whole step, half step. One more time, E flat, whole, whole, and a half. One more, E, whole step, whole step, half step. We'll do it again, E whole, whole, half. Doesn't look like just yet that is the key to everything in your world, but it is going to be. Now let's go back and we're going to do these, sorry about that, didn't mean to hit the camera. I'm going to do that again, C, D flat, D, E flat, and E. Now let's go back and talk about exactly what the pattern was. On C, very easy. It's four steps, all white keys. On D flat, it went black, black, white, black. So just the third note was white. Now D flat and D are like opposites of each other because D flat was all black with the middle note white. And D is all white, but the third note is, I think I said that wrong. D flat is all flats, but the third note is white. That's what I meant to say. White. D is all whites, except that the third note is black. Black. So D flat, exact opposite of D. And E flat is the exact opposite of E. Outer black keys, middle white keys. White, black, black, sorry, black, white, white, black. E is backwards. Starts out on white keys, goes to black keys. White, black, black, white. So E flat and E are like the opposites of each other. Let's have a look at, we just did the notes. I'm on this octave, okay. C, D flat, D, E flat, E. We did this set of notes. Now we're gonna do this set of notes. G, A flat, A, B flat, B. Okay, so instead of this, we're going to do this. And it's going to be really easy because everything that we just did is going to match up starting on G. First notes, all white keys, the G tetrachord, white, uh, sorry, whole, whole, half, all white keys, just like the C tetrachord. The A flat goes black, black, white, black. We've seen this before. Just the third note is white whole, whole, half. The A is the opposite of A flat, so only the third note is black. Whole, whole, half, white, white, black, white. B flat, we've seen this before. Outside are black keys, the middle two notes are white keys. And if you check any of what I'm saying, you'll see these are all tetrachords. Up a whole step, whole step, half step. B, just like we've seen before, and we're going to hook them up in a second, we have two outside white notes, the two middle notes are black. So whole step, whole step, half step goes white, black, black, white. Again, opposite of B flat. Black, white, white, black, white, black, black, white. Where have we seen these? These were always matching when they were a fifth apart. So watch. The C tetrachord, all white keys. The G tetrachord, all white keys. The D flat tetrachord, black, black, white, black. And the A flat tetrachord, the same. The D tetrachord in reverse, white, white, black, white. 
the A tetrachord, the same pattern, E flat, black, white, white, black, just like the B flat tetrachord, and then the E tetrachord, white, black, black, white, just like the B tetrachord. So we've just done, out of 12 possible tetrachords, we've done 10 of them, but you only have five patterns so far. So we still need to do the last two, and the last two are each unique. You don't have something that matches the other one. Each one is separate. Sorry, got to cross my legs here, getting a little uncomfortable. Okay, let's have a look at F. Whole step, whole step, half step. I'm doing this one slowly because we haven't seen it yet. Whole step, whole step, and a half step. So it went white, 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 black. In no other place, starting on a white key, do you have this pattern, only on F. Now let's take F sharp. Whole step, whole step, half step. We'll do it again. Whole step, whole step, half step. So notice that these are opposites of each other. F, white, 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 black. And F sharp, black, 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 white. So while each one is unique, they do still fit together in terms of being opposites of each other. White, 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 black, 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 white. By the way, you might want to, if you haven't been doing this, go back to the beginning, get your keyboard, and play along with me because this is so much more fun when you're actually doing it and feeling everything as we're going through it. All right, now let's talk about the BF for a minute because I want to just kind of point out that every time, I guess I can talk to you for a second now and look at you or you know what I mean, look at you. There, okay. Um, the FB, or flipped around, B up to F. FB is of course a fourth, B up to F is a fifth, right? And if you haven't gotten there yet, the reason that FB is a fifth is because if you start on F and you go up by step by letter name, B will be, I said it wrong, F up to B is a fourth. And the reason it's a fourth is if you start on F, and you count out by step the letter names, B will be number four. F, G, A, B. So you got a fourth. It's the letter names that matter here. It doesn't matter exactly if it's a flat or a sharp, okay? And then if it's B up to F, it's always going to be a fifth. B, C, D, E, F. Okay, my battery is about to croak, so I'm going to come back in one second once I plug in my computer. Okay, I am back. Uh, where was I? Ah yes, the B, F, and the F, B. B, C, D, E, F. So B up to F is a fifth, F up to B is a fourth, F, G, A, B. Those two intervals, the B, F, fourth, and the, sorry, the B, F, B up to F, fifth, and the F, B, up to B fourth are the two weird intervals. They do things that no other interval does. And we're going to have a look and see why that is. Okay. Now some of this, we're getting a little bit off track, but we'll get into that more when we talk about intervals, but still it doesn't hurt to see it now. Here's your F going up to B. It is unlike any other fourth on the white keys. And the reason is it is a half step larger. We call all the other white key fourths a perfect fourth. And the, the fast way to look at this, the shortcut, is when it is a fourth with two black keys in the middle, it is a perfect fourth. So notice, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, not a perfect fourth. That's got three black keys in the middle. That's a half step larger. We call it an augmented fourth. And because of that, nothing else between the F and B is going to be exactly like starting a fourth anywhere else. And the same thing with the fifths. Notice that the fifths, when they are perfect, they have three black keys in the middle. So you see, in all of these situations, you've got three black keys in the middle until you get to BF, that's the only exception. It has two black keys in the middle. So we need to get 
a half step larger. Otherwise, this is not a perfect fifth, it is a diminished fifth. So to get it a half step larger, either the upper note goes up a half step, or the lower note goes down a half step. And either way, you've got your three black keys. Perfect fifth, perfect fifth. So your fourths and your fifths, those BF and FB intervals are always going to be a little bit different from all the others. That is why when you have the F tetrachord, there is no other tetrachord that matches. And the same thing with the F, or I should say the F B flat tetrachord doesn't match any other tetrachord. And the F sharp B tetrachord also doesn't match any other tetrachord. So once again, we have 12 major scales and they are all unique. We have 12 tetrachords. They are, first of all, half the size, and second of all, they are not all unique in terms of the shape. So you only actually need to learn seven shapes. It's much faster. You need the C shape, all white, the D flat shape, third note white, the D shape, third note black, the E flat shape, just the two outer notes are black. The E shape, just the two outer notes are white. And then the B tetrachord and the B and the, sorry, the F tetrachord and the F sharp tetrachord. And that's it because this, if you know this tetrachord, you know this one. If you know this tetrachord, you know this one. What are we going to do with those? We are going to put two together and create a major scale. If you know your tetrachords, this next step is very easy, even though the scales are all unique to one another. You're not thinking about the scale as a unit. You're thinking of the scale as two tetrachords. The easiest scales to learn are the ones built on C, D flat, D, E flat and E. The reason, because each half is a match. So on C, okay, and the other thing you need to know is the tetrachords are separated by a whole step. As long as you have two tetrachords and they are separated by a whole step, that is your formula for a major scale. So C major, tetrachord, go up a whole step, tetrachord. That's it. C major tetrachord plus G major tetrachord makes a C major scale. So you want to practice that a bunch of times so that you get really comfortable with the C major scale. And as you notice, I'm not doing that fingering that everybody learns, which is a good, it's a great way to learn. It's a great way to start, but this one's a little different because you're thinking of it as two halves a C tetrachord half and a G tetrachord half. So what you have is tetrachord in the left hand, tetrachord in the right hand. And you can use what I'm doing, the second, third, and fourth, and fifth fingers, or you can use fingers one, two, three, and four. Either way, it works really well. Now, let's go, we're gonna just do the white key tetrachords first. This one had no black keys in it. The next one is the D major tetrachord and the A major tetrachord, and they both go, I'm gonna do them together. White, white, black, white, sorry. White, white, black, white. We're gonna put them together. D, A, backwards. I'll do it again. We'll, do, we'll go a little slow so you can all play with me. It's much more fun that way. A tetrachord. Let's play it backwards. All right. It might feel a little harder to come down because we've always been talking about the tetrachord as moving up. But once this becomes really solid and memorized, Think about trying to feel the tetrachord as one unit. Don't just think there's a D, and next is an E, and next is an F sharp. Try to feel the whole tetrachord as one 
thing and then just break it up. And that way, when you come back down, it's just as easy. A and back down. Now we're going to do E. So far, just to recap, our first set of tetrachords had no black keys. Our next set had one black key and our next set will have two black keys. E tetrachord, up a whole step, B tetrachord. Again, they both went white, black, black, white. Again, E tetrachord, B tetrachord. Back down. So, so far, we'll do it one more time. C tetrachord. A little shortcut to this is think of the tetrachords for C, D, E, they are just a fifth apart, and then the tetrachords match. So the C had no sharps and flats, neither will G. Now the D, the tetrachords are a fifth apart, D and A, and they also match. White, white, black, white, 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 black, white. The E tetrachords, the E tetrachord, I should say. Again, you're starting a fifth apart and they match. White, black, black, white. White, black, black, white. Now we just need to add the black keys. D flat, black, black, white, black. This is the reverse of D, white, white, black, white. This is black, black, white, black. Again, start a fifth apart and they will match. Black, black, white, black. First tetrachord. And back down. We'll do it one more time, nice and slow, play along. Don't be afraid. Remember, the key is in reminding yourself that the tetrachords are identical. So if you memorize that feeling of black, black, white, black for these tetrachords, you're simply splitting them apart. Then E flat, again, start a fifth apart, and they're gonna go white, black, black, white. So E flat, B flat. Reverse the direction. One more time, E flat, B flat. Back down. All right, we're down to the last two. The F tetrachord, and now this is the first time when the two tetrachords are not going to match, but they are a fifth apart. So the first tetrachord is F, the unique one that goes white, white, black, white, 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 black. Now that C, hopefully we have memorized, we want to memorize those positions. C is all white. So here's F, here's C. Backward. And the last one, and now everybody always thinks that the F sharp scale is so difficult, but if you see it in tetrachords, it's just as easy as everything else. The first tetrachord, That's the one with all four blacks and then the white going whole step, whole step, half step. The second one, hopefully we're starting to memorize it. We did this as a D flat tetrachord. That was the one that went two black keys. The third note is white. Now we're just going to combine them. so much easier than trying to get here and go, Ugh, I don't know, was that a B or a C? I don't remember. This way, well, that's your tetrachord. It has to be that. And this, if you know your tetrachords, it can't be anything other than this. You never have to wonder anymore, should I play an E or an F? It's not one giant unit that's easy to get lost in. It's tetrachord number one, tetrachord number two. So that brings us to our next thing. So far, we have done all the scales that match in tetrachords. But, okay, I am back 
I just try to step away to reset my computer so that it won't keep cutting me out every three minutes and hopefully I did it right. All right, so you learned all the major scales so far in which both sides are identical. And you've learned two in which both tetrachords are not identical. You learned that F has this tetrachord, this unique tetrachord, and then it goes to the C with all white keys. And you learned F sharp is also a unique tetrachord, black, 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 white, and then this tetrachord. All right, now what we're going to do is go through all the scales that we are missing. And that is, first of all, G, A, and B. With the G tetrachord, can you see me here? Yeah, you can. With the G tetrachord, you have all white keys. Go up one whole step, remember one whole step. The D tetrachord, hopefully you're starting to remember now, that's third note is black. So white keys, third note is black. Going to A, so G was zero plus one. In terms of black keys, zero black keys, one black key, zero plus one. A is one black key plus two black keys. Up one step, back down. Now, if this seems garbled at all, I can promise you the only reason is because you haven't thought about this in terms of tetrachords. The moment you get to the point that you go, oh yes, a tetrachord, it's this shape. I'll move my hand over here so you can see it better. It's this shape. And then E, oh yes, it's the white, black, black, white. As soon as you have that memorized, this works. A plus E, back down. All right, the last one, the B major scale, the tetrachord has two black keys, and then we know the F sharp, we've been working on that, three black keys, right? Whole step, whole step, half step. So, B, F sharp. Again, I can't stress this enough. You have to memorize the tetrachords, but the great thing about it is there are only four notes and you only need to know seven. C, D flat, D, E flat, E, F, and F sharp. Because the last three are the same patterns as the first, I'm sorry, the last five are the same patterns as the first five. That's when it all works. So, so far we've done C, we've done D, we've done E, F, G, A, and B. Also, we did D flat, E flat, and F sharp or G flat. The only two we're missing now are A flat and B flat. That's all that's left. A flat. Just we're gonna. I'm gonna talk now in terms of black keys. So with A flat, only the third note is white. Go up a whole step. You're on E flat, and with E flat, the two middle notes are white. So in other words, A flat one white key, E flat two white keys. Then you're going to subtract, uh, or no, I should say we're going to add white keys. This time B flat has two white keys, and we know F, uh, we've done this a few times, starts out all white keys. So B flat, up a whole step is F, and back down. That is how I want you to start to think about major scales. It is very different from how you've probably ever been taught, but there are a lot of benefits to get comfortable with this. Now, we're going to take the scales that we've been working on, and we're gonna play the same major scales, but we're going to put them in the order of the circle of fifths. I love doing this because you're going to see a very different pattern. Now, if this starts to blow your head off a little bit, the reason is we started to look at the scales one way, and now, oh, you probably want to, I don't know, watch me talking rather than watch my hands talking. Okay, so you've been looking at the scales one particular way. Now, we're going to look at them a completely different way. 
So many people learn to do their scales one way and they get comfortable with that. Okay, I can use the one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five fingering. Everything is great. Some people do it in terms of, okay, well, I've memorized my key signatures, so I'm just going to write a bunch of natural notes on the page and then sharp appropriately. So yeah, everybody does it a little bit differently and every system is perfectly fine. The problem comes with students when they only know one because they get into the notion, for one thing, that they think that if they know it, as long as they can do it, that's it, and they can move on and start composing. But the reality is, the more you are creative when you're thinking about your scales, the more you're gonna get creative when you're composing. The, 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 everything is not separate chunks. If you start out by thinking of what you're doing as it's just mechanics, it's just something to learn. Okay, I've memorized it, I see it, I'm done. Now I wanna be a composer. You will be infinitely more creative if you start from the very first steps being creative. And how are you gonna get creative with something like scales is you have to start by being mentally really flexible about seeing them a lot of different ways. The more patterns you see, the more connections you see, the more you're gonna be able to apply that into what you're composing. That's why it makes a difference. So now we're gonna take what we've just done. If you're doing this, if you're watching this for the first time, you won't remember every single thing that I'm doing. So what I would recommend is watch it a bunch of times and try to look for something different each time. Like in the beginning, if, if it's the very first time you're doing it, don't worry about too much about the circle of fifths. Pay more attention to what happens in the beginning and try to accumulate gradually as you're going through the video. So the beginning, if you're not yet comfortable with whole steps and half steps, practice that. Practice going from note to note on the piano, knowing the difference between moving by half steps. So I'll get you the piano back for a second. Half steps. And whole steps. You can get sort of creative with this and alternate between a whole step and a half step and a whole step and a half step. And that is actually something that is done in jazz music, that half whole alternating figure. Whole step, half step. Whole, half, whole, half, whole, half. See if you can come back down. You can also Reverse that, start with the half and then go to whole. Half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole. See if you can come back down. These are really excellent exercises just to get to know your half steps. Here I am, and your whole steps. Get to know those. When that starts to feel really comfortable, it's going to be much easier to memorize your tetrachords. And again, you really only need to know the tetrachords, C, D flat, D, E flat, E, F, and F sharp, because the next five will match your first five. G, A flat, A, B flat, B will match exactly the same patterns as C, D flat, D, E flat, E. You will also start to notice that the flat scale matches, no, opposite of matches. It's the exact opposite of its letter name scale that doesn't have a flat. What that means is D flat tetrachord and D tetrachord are the exact opposites. D flat goes black, black, white, black, and D goes white, white, black, white. The other ones that are a flip around of each other are E flat and E, A flat and A, and B flat and B. So the more you start to see all the zaniness in the tetrachords, then all you need to do is put two of them together as long as you know them really well, this next step is really easy. You put the two together and make sure they're separated by a whole step. And there you go. Now, we're going to go to the circle of fifths because we're going to add 
more stuff to the mix. So once again, bye-bye to my face and hello to the keyboard. It's good. Can I see it okay? Okay. First of all, I like to explain the fifths like this in the beginning. Later on, I, I'll dig into just a ridiculous amount of detail. But in the beginning, I just want to keep it simple so that we don't have to sweat over the fifths when we're already sweating over the scales. So your fifths. If your hands are having one finger to each consecutive white key, the outer two fingers are playing a fifth. And the fifth that we want particularly are the ones that are on white keys that have three black keys in the middle. So C to G, and we're just gonna go up for now. I'm gonna start a little lower. C, G, D, A, E, and B. I'm thinking, okay, and yeah, no, I'll leave it with that again. Now this is the order of the scales we're about to play, but actually I didn't even need to tell you about the circle of fifths if you move according to tetrachords. It will automatically happen. This is one of the beauties about thinking in tetrachords, and this is why. Here is C major. Go up a whole step and do the next tetrachord. Now the next one is going to start on the G. And the reason is because each tetrachord, back to my face, okay, in case you forgot what I look like, okay, each tetrachord, because the lower half of a major scale is a tetrachord and the upper half of a major scale is a tetrachord, you've got both halves having the same formula. So a tetrachord can either be the lower half of a major scale or the upper half of a major scale. So when you go C, D, E, F, and then G, A, B, C, well, that upper G, A, B, C can either be the upper half of the C major scale, or it can be the lower half of the G major scale. So let's have a look at that. Here's C major. Here's G major. Now that G major tetrachord can either be the second half of C major scale or it can be the first half of the G major scale. So now we're going to make it the first half of G major. Go up one step. There's the end of the G major scale. But that can also be the first half of the D major scale. Up a whole step. Now this tetrachord can also be the first half of the A major scale. And this tetrachord can also be the first half of the E major scale. And this tetrachord can also be the first half of the B major scale. Up a whole step, there's our last tetrachord. In fact, it won't be our last one. We're going to say that this one is also the first half of F sharp major scale. So what we've done is without even thinking about it, we have gone up in the circle of fifths. C major, you see the next tetrachord starts a fifth up. So that is our next scale. And the next tetrachord starts a fifth up, so D is the next scale. And that tetrachord started a fifth up, so that's the next scale. And this started a fifth up, from A, sorry, let me do it again so you can see it. Again, start it up a fifth. There you go. And then this is one fifth up from the B. And we're gonna end with this scale. Why we are ending with F sharp is because we went up, hello, we went up six fifths. And when we went up six fifths from C, just to recap, we went C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp. We went up six fifths, right? So C's, we didn't go up yet. Up one fifth, G, two, D, three, A, four, E, five, B, and six, F sharp. It took us six 
fifths to get to the note that is half an octave away from C. Why that half an octave is significant is because we just went through half the possible notes. If it took six to get halfway there, it's going to take another six to get halfway back. So that F sharp is significant. Going down the circle of fifths, and this is something that I know a lot of people struggle with because they're up on a C and they go, okay, I know coming down a fifth is going to be an F, but what happens after that? Eh, I just did B and B doesn't have an F. Oh, I'm stuck. When you use the tetrachords, it is just as easy in either direction. So we're going to do that now. And since it is moving down, we're going to start a little higher. We can see this, right? Yes. Okay. So here's C major. We know that this is the lower tetrachord of C major. It is also the upper tetrachord of, well, if it ends on F, it's got to start on F. Look how easy that was. You don't have to count fifths. All you need to do is look at your tetrachord. Upper half of F. So start on F, F tetrachord, and look at that. You're done. That is how easy this is once you know this information. So, and again, you have indeed popped down one fifth. Now let's take that F tetrachord. It is the, as we know, first half of F. It is also the second half of this guy, B flat. B flat tetrachord and you're done. Ta-da! Okay, one more time. One last time, but we're only going to do the B flat tetrachord because that is the first half of B flat major. It is also the second half of E flat major. So we start on E flat. Isn't this fun? Take just the first half of E flat, and it is also the second half of A flat. There's our note. Right? You don't have to get to E flat and go, oh, was it a flat with black keys? Of course, you're eventually going to gravitate towards that. You'll know it. But this way, you really see it. You don't even have to wonder for a nanosecond. Upper half of A flat major. Let's take A flat, just the first tetrachord. And it is also the second tetrachord of D flat. take the D-flat tetrachord. It is also the second half of G-flat. We're going to call this G-flat because we call this D-flat. D-flat, E-flat, F, G-flat. So this is the first half of D-flat major, also the second half of G-flat major. Now whether you call this note G-flat or F-sharp, it doesn't matter. The tetrachord still goes white, 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 black. Whole step, whole step, half step. And here we have the last scale that we really need to complete the circle of fifths. Because remember, when we went up, sorry, when we went up six fifths away from C, we ended up on F sharp. And now we went six fifths away from C in the opposite direction. C, then F, remember F, F, G, A, B flat was the tetrachord, so the next fifth down was B flat top note of the F tetrachord, right? F, sorry, C down one fifth F, down two fifths B flat, down three fifths E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. G flat was the sixth fifth, which makes perfect sense because again, if it took us six fifths going up to get exactly halfway through the octave, it means we have to go six fifths in the opposite direction also to reach the halfway point. So we started out C, we went in opposite directions by perfect fifths, and we landed on F sharp slash G flat. We ended up in the same place, and that is our circle of fifths. So if you ever got stuck looking at the circle and the sticks and the letters, and you're like, it just looks like random numbers, yeah, this is because it does. But when you do it on the piano, you can actually see why that is making sense. You can see that you did move by fifths. You got halfway after six, uh, six uh, cycles from C. We start with C because there's no sharps and no flats. 
and you got six in either direction, you ended up on the same note. In the sharps, moving up by fifths, you ended up on what we call F sharp, and when you were coming down, you ended up on what we call G flat. But it's the same note, thus you've just created your circle of fifths. So, uh, is there any, oh yes, there is something else. Now let's talk about how the patterns connect. Okay, I come back to the piano. Again, I can't stress this enough. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of, here I am, lots of information in this. So the best way to get the maximum out of this is you're gonna wanna watch it more than once, okay? Really, I, I, I have my videos that I watch forever, okay? I'll tell you, why do I keep sticking? I don't know. Anyway, you can hear me. Um, I'm not gonna do this again because I'm on a roll now. Um, one um, passion that I have when I'm not doing this is I, I love tap dancing. I just, I always have. So I watch, um, and it's, it's so wonderful these days because all these people like me love singing in the rain and they love Moses supposes. And I used to watch, you know, look for these things five, six years ago and nobody had them out. And I was like, isn't there somebody else who's a nut job like me who like wants to break down Moses supposes and just teach it to the masses and nobody did. And nowadays you go and there's, there's a bunch of different videos of people going, here's how you do the dance to Moses supposes. And they do falap ball change. So da, 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 da. And to anybody who's not into tap dancing, it's just like, Who's going to sit there and watch somebody go full lap, ball change, back to, back to, and a one, and a two. You know what? I do. I watch those things every morning, 30 minutes at a time, over and over and over. And each time I start out, I can't do anything. The next time I can do a little bit. The next time I can do a little bit more. And before I know it, I can go from beginning to end of that video and I can do all of it. But I couldn't when I started. So... You really want to get the most out of this, even if it means just take a segment and get comfortable with it. I promise you it will work. It works. You're going to start with something and you think, I can't do this. Don't ever think that and don't even let that enter your mind. Never, never talk to yourself in terms of opinions, okay? I can't do this is not a statement. It's not a fact. It's an opinion. Okay, so take all those opinions and stick them in a bag and dump them out uh, at your front door and leave them there. They have no room here. They get nothing accomplished. So what you want to get in the habit of doing is thinking in terms of fact. So here's an, an example of a fact. It might be a fact. It might not be with you, but it might be a fact. Okay. I am not able to... I, or, you know, here's another, here's a fact. I don't have all of the tetra chords memorized. Okay, then work on those. Start memorizing them. You don't have to try to memorize 12. Just go through the video, and when you can do two or three, and you start to feel like your brain is blitzing, you go, okay, that's it. That's what I'm working on for today. These three tetra chords. And the next day, you say, okay, let me try these three again. And if you find that they're much easier, and now you're on top of it, and it didn't feel so easy the day before, but now it is getting easier. Add a few more, and then add a few more. And before you know it, it's going to be you are going to be me learning Moses Supposes for how to tap dance. You'll see that each time you go through it, you're going to accumulate more, you're going to remember more, it's going to make more sense. So as you keep doing it, add on all this junk, and you'll never have to pay somebody for all these lessons because you just got everything that you needed, okay? So work on this. Now I'm going to go through the next part, the next piece of the puzzle, the next pattern, because this is all really important stuff, but it's not everything just yet. There are more ways that you can do this, okay? And of course, even when I'm through with this video, there are other ways that you can do this. But we're going to start with this much, and when it all starts to come together, already you will have way more tools than you had simply by, okay, well, I can play da, 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 and, and nothing to go with it. So let's come back to the piano now. I hope you've had a break. If you didn't, pause the video, go get your favorite drink, get some nice, I don't know, herbal tea or uh, water or chocolate prep. 
protein powder shake or peanut butter and banana all mushed together and a little protein powder and mix it all up and drink it down and come back rejuvenated and we're going to do this next part. All right, so let me just prepare my camera one more time. Okay, so this is going to be some repetition, but with a little bit of a twist. So how far can you see? Can you see the C? Good. All right. So here's C major. Now I'm not going to repeat all the details right now about tetrachords because that's in the earlier part, but we're going to move up one fifth as we did before. And as many of you know, you're going to add one sharp. You go up by one fifth from C, there's going to be a scale with one sharp. And right now when I say fifth, I'm implying perfect fifth. You go up another perfect fifth, and now you're on D. Now that's one fifth from G, but it's two fifths from C. Gone up, sorry, gone up one fifth, gone up two fifths. So that scale is going to have two sharps. Go up one more fifth, that's three fifths from C, it's going to have three sharps. Okay, so I'm going to pause for one second because we know that each time we're moving up a fifth, we are adding a sharp. How do we know which note we are adding a sharp to? And this is super easy once you get used to this. Always think for your scale, add a sharp seven. And this is easy to remember because it's the first note that gets sharp. C major, zero sharps. G major, one, up one fifth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seventh note is sharp, and that pattern is going to remain. So D major, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is going to be raised. Another way you can think of it, if this helps, is it's the note right before the key of your scale. So if you're in D major, it's going to be C sharp. It's another way to do it, or you can start from the low D count up to the seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But remember D has two sharps. What's the other sharp? We're collecting it from the previous scale. So G major had F sharp. D major has F sharp plus the number seven, four, five, six, seven. There's D major. A major has F sharp and C sharp. Six plus seven, all right? Go up another fifth. E major is going to have the F sharp, G sharp, and C sharp. Not in the same order, of course, because we're starting on E. Number seven is the new sharp. B major has everything that we've already sharped, these four. Plus one, two, three, four, five, six, sharp the seven. Okay, now I know you could have already done this by using the tetrachords. The reason we're doing it this way is not simply so that you're learning the scales. Yes, it helps you to cement the scales when you can see them different ways. But the other thing is, this way you are seeing a little bit more clearly how the scales all connect to each other. The tetrachords are magnificent for being able to pick any scale at any moment and you don't have to connect it to something else to make it make sense. So supposing somebody says, play an A-flat major scale, and you're like, Bzzz, I never play anything in A-flat major. I don't think I remember what it is. You don't have to remember A-flat major. You just remember what a tetrachord is. A-flat, whole step, whole step, half step. Start a whole step higher and play another tetrachord. Whole step, whole step, half step. So that's all you need. But as I was saying before, the more different ways that you understand scales, the more music in general is going to start to come together. So that's a great way to start, but you still want to go through the circle of fifths and get to know the scales and how they relate to each other. So one more time, C major, G major, sharp the seven, D major, keep the F sharp and sharp the seven, A major, Keep the F sharp and C sharp and sharp the seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. E major, sharp again the F sharp, G sharp, and C sharp and the seventh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And B sharp, the F sharp, D sharp, 
sorry, C sharp, B sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and the seven. On here. Now the F sharp, I'll bring it down. Okay, I'm still in B. I just dropped down a couple octaves. Now remember, you can look at it either as up a fifth or as it's the upper tetrachord. Either way, let's do the F sharp scale. F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp. We have to call that E sharp because in a scale, you always have one of every letter name. So if this is an F, it's F sharp. F, G, A is F sharp, G sharp, A sharp. Well, B is B. C sharp, D sharp. So the next note has to be E something. And it's not this note, it's this note. It is E sharp, F sharp. All right, so B major. This one's super easy. It's just all the black keys are being used. So five sharps. And this is six sharps because we're still sharpening all the black keys plus a sharp note that is not a black key. That's your sixth note that is sharped. E sharp, F sharp. Let's do everything this time. Excuse me, gotta just change positions, getting a little, okay, cramped up here. Okie doke. Changing position, to, sorry, changing directions. Let's take C major. Just as it had no sharps, it also has no flats. Moving down to F, has one flat. Now you really just need the very first scale away from C by a fifth, going up or going down to know the pattern. With C up to G, it's the seventh note that got sharp. And that's the pattern that remained every time you continue to go up fifths. When you're coming down, it's the fourth note that gets flatted. And that pattern is going to continue. So I'm gonna start this higher. So how high can I do this? Can I, yeah, you can see it here. Okay, great. So the fourth note, B flat got flatted. It's also the new note of the scale that comes up because that's our last note in the first tetrachord. So now B flat is going to have two flats. The B flat, of course, plus the flatted which number? Number four. One, two, three, flat, four. And then end with your F tetrachord. If you're really a beginner doing this, I know it looks like there are three flats, but there are not. Because B flat, B flat, we are considering that to be one flat. So in terms of notes, there's a B flat and an E flat. And that's two flats. We wouldn't call this a scale with a B flat and an E flat and a B flat. That's redundant. We already counted the B flat. Do you see what I mean? So B flat, two flats. Now, that's our new scale E flat. It's going to have three flats. It's going to have the B flat and the E flat that we already had, and it's going to flat number four. That's always our pattern. One, two, three, four. And that four is also going to be our new scale plus A flat, B flat, E flat, plus flatted four. And as before, you can always simply check it and say, okay, here's my tetrachord, yeah, that's good. Went up a whole step, that's good. Here's my new tetrachord, yeah, all, all good. Eventually, this is all gonna come together, okay? But you also wanna be able to see them all in separate ways. So here's our A flat scale, ends on the D flat. So we go to D flat, D flat is five fifths away from C coming down. It's gonna have five flats. It's gonna have the ones that we already had, plus one, two, three, flat, four. And the last scale is this scale. D flat, E flat, F, G flat. So G flat, I'll drop down an octave just because, and we're going to have tetrachord here, up a whole step, and tetrachord here. All right, different ways to look at the same thing. And because we're calling this, flat, this scale now G flat, uh, by the way, here's our flat at four. Okay, what does that mean? It means it has to be called something flat. We're not gonna call this a B any longer, and that's because we're calling this as a flat scale. So G flat, A flat, B flat, 
C flat, G, A, B, C, right? Those are our letter names, G, A, B, C, G flat, A flat, D flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, those are our six flats. G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F, finally a natural note, it's the only natural note, and G flat. Okay, that is everything to cover about playing the scales. So you've got different ways to practice them. You can practice them using the tetrachords, and I can't stress it enough. It is such a cool way to start, not only because you don't have to memorize nearly as many patterns. You're only memorizing uh, seven. You're memorizing seven four-note patterns, and that's it, rather than 12 eight-note patterns. So it's just one pattern shy away from one quarter of the work to get you to the same place. It is a fabulous place to start, and it's so cool seeing how they're fitting together. Next thing you want to do is go through it as the circle of fifths. So you see how all the scales uh, on a kind of a different level all link together. Then you want to do it counting up, not only counting up the sharps and the flats and seeing that there's one more each time you move a fifth, but also get into the pattern of sharp sevens and flat fours. Okay, work on that and I will do another video later kind of polishing off the major scales. There's not a whole lot left to do and the next part will feel like a breeze when this you just keep playing. It's so much more fun also. It's so much more fun to play the scales and to start out that way than to start out by looking at a page and going, okay, well, this is the notes on a, on a treble clef, some notes on a bass clef, some notes on a C clef, um, and there's the, the circle on the page with the sticks and the letters. So much more fun when you're actually playing and feeling the patterns, whether it's the little tetrachord patterns or the big major scale patterns or the distances of the perfect fifths. It's so much more fun. Stress that enough. You're actually playing. You're going to be not just playing, feeling the patterns, you're going to be hearing the scales. And you're going to start to, you're going to, trust me, you're going to want to start going in different directions, not simply playing the scales, but doing things that you're going to be able to do because this is going to be giving you a diving board to start diving in on more stuff. So work on this, and please feel free to leave a comment below, ask me anything. I do read my comments. I always want to know how people are doing and what people are having questions with. And if this is helpful, please share the love with a like and a subscribe, and uh, I'm going to be putting out lots and lots of content. I promise you there's going to be a lot of things that, like this, you're, you're not going to see everywhere, like using tetrachords to make your scales and stuff like that. And I think my dog is telling me, he's like, really gotta go outside right now. So I am going to leave you with this and uh, thank you for sticking around to the end. And uh, I hope to hear from you and I hope to know how this, uh, you know, what kind of progress you're making with the scales. Okay, uh, toodaloo for now. All right, bye.